Welcome back to Sibelius. First thing you, that one will notice when they launch Sibelius is the new ribbon style approach on top of the page. Sibelius has taken on a new ribbon approach, much like Microsoft Windows or Word, to make it easier for their customers. First thing one should do when they first launch Sibelius is to make sure that their input and output is working properly. To set the input, simply go up to File menu and drag down to Preferences. Here you want to click on Input Devices. If your keyboard is hooked up, it should show up here in this input device list with a check mark next to it. And if you look over to the right, you'll see a test button. If you play notes on your MIDI keyboard, that green light should light up. That means that your keyboard is connected to the computer properly for Sibelius to see it. Click OK. So bring you back to your main screen. Now let's set the output. Go up to Play menu. And over here on the left of the screen, it has Configuration, Mixer, and Setup. Click on the little arrow to the left of Setup. These are the different configurations or libraries that one can use when using Sibelius. We're going to use in this video General MIDI Basic. These are all these are other libraries that can be used, especially the Sibelius 7 lounge, uh, sounds if you loaded those upon startup. Right now, please just check General MIDI Basic. Then select the device that is over on the right side, Active Devices, and click on the Test button. If it plays back correctly, you've got output. If it doesn't, down at the lower left of your screen, click on Audio Engine Options and set the appropriate interface for you. When you're through, go back to your main screen, and now you're back into Sibelius. You'll notice the Sibelius menus up on the top all have different things. If you click on File Menu, it's here where you can save your work. You can export things, m lots of things, as audio, PDF, graphics, a Scorch web page, music XML, MIDI. Uh, if you have a friend that has a previous version of Sibelius, you can click on that and save it as a previous version so that he or she can open it up. Here you can also design your own manuscript paper and put it into that uh, manuscript column as well. If you click on the Home menu here, it changes the parameters in the ribbon above. This is where you can add or remove a staff from your program, from your uh, score. You can change an instrument instead of piano. You might decide to have organ instead. You can click on Change and change that staff. We'll get into all of these things that are in here as the time goes on. Note input, you'll, you'll find here that uh, in the next video that you're able to input in step time or real time. Sibelius calls that flexi time input. You can arrange. Uh, there's a lots of things. In notations menu, this is where you get to your key signature, time signature, bar lines, your lines. And don't overlook the uh, bottom here. It's easy for one just to click on lines or symbols, but if you click on the lines, you can get into the more advanced portion of these menus where you can actually choose the line that you're looking for. You can add note names. Anything dealing with text will be found under the text menu, like formatting, lyrics, styles, all of those things. Play menu. This is where you can get to the new mixer in Sibelius. We'll get to this a little bit later, but if you click on Mixer, you now have a new style mixer that is wonderful. If you click three times on this little uh, icon over here on the left, it blows up your mixer so that you can have solo and mute, panning. Uh, you can choose your libraries that you wish to go with here as well. If you click again, it goes back to a smaller mixer as well. You can close your mixer here. Here are your controls for play, stop, record, fast forward, rewind, all of these things. 
layout menu obviously deals with margins, sizes of the page, and things like that. As we get into more uh, appropriate things for our layout, we will come back to this menu. Appearance, how Sibelius looks on the printed page, and obviously parts. If you're writing a score, you can do parts. This is kind of new in Sibelius Review, where if you're grading this, you can add a new comment, type in to your students, uh, things like that, and then post those for your students to see. To erase, simply click and hit delete. You can also use the highlighting tool and click and drag at the end of this a highlighter to highlight a specific section. And again, if you drag it all the way to the off position, it goes away. Finally, in view mode, you will see that in, in this mode, you can look at your score panoramically or horizontally. Or if you click on panorama again, it goes back to page view. You can also zoom in or by holding down the option key, zoom out on your music as well. You can also, over on the right side of the screen here, you have panels. This is very important. If you go to panels, for those of you older Sibelius users, you're probably wondering, where is my transport? It's still there. This is where you get it at, right here. This is your tempo. This is where you can slow down your tempo of your piece upon recording or playback. And here is your record, all of your controls for tape trans transport. You also have different views. This is where the ideas menu is at now. We'll get into that later. Navigation menu, mixer, video, fretboard. If you're a guitarist, you can choose uh, fretboard and, and go to that view as well. And that concludes this version uh, video of Sibelius.